involves the solution of three different kinds of problems which are covered by three closely related divisions of ballistics. Interior ballistics is concerned with the launching of the ammunition. Exterior ballistics is concerned with its behavior in flight. And terminal ballistics deals with the action of the ammunition at the target. Any gun, howitzer, mortar, or small arms weapon, the pressure behind the projectile is caused by the burning of the propelling charge, or propellant, which forms a tremendous amount of gas in the chamber. This pressure is measured in thousands of pounds per square inch and is exerted equally on all surrounding surfaces, but with different results. The forces represented by the vertical arrows have no effect on the projectile. The pressure or force to the right is against the projectile, the most readily movable of the surrounding surfaces, and sends it out of the bore. At the same time, the force to the left is against the gun, which moves in recoil. Now you're ready to consider exterior ballistics. Exterior ballistics is concerned with the behavior of projectiles in flight. If we could fire a cannonball, influenced by no outside forces, it would continue forever in its original direction at its original velocity. If we add the force of gravity, the cannonball follows this sort of path or trajectory. By adding air resistance, we get this result and the range is shortened still more. To overcome air resistance and get greater range, we might streamline our cannonball, stretching it into a projectile. But look what happens. Our projectile tumbles and the range is shorter than ever. We need something to stabilize our projectile in flight. One solution is to equip the projectile with fins the use of fins solves the problem very effectively for mortars and some types of rockets, and the result is much greater range. Having the projectile spin is another solution to the tumbling problem. This, however, causes the projectile to swerve from a straight course, drifting to one side according to the direction of the spin. That isn't as bad as it might seem because we know it's going to happen, and we allow for the drift in aiming. To get the required spin, spiral grooves are cut in the bore of the gun and a soft rotating band put around the projectile. The band engages the grooves and the projectile rotates or spins. Although there are many forces affecting the projectile, the most important to remember are gravity, which pulls the projectile down, and drag due to air resistance which slows the projectile. There's nothing we can do about gravity, but we can overcome the effects of drag to some extent in the design of our projectiles. For instance, by the streamlined windshield on this one. Boat tailing, another method of streamlining, also helps to reduce drag. For long range fire, we must consider in addition to gravity and drag, the effects of varying density of the air the temperature of the air, winds over the trajectory, and the rotation of the earth. The basic problem of the exterior ballistician is always the same. To study, improve, and predict the behavior of projectiles or missiles in flight. 